Coming up on Falcon Weekly, we've had a soggy Monday here on campus, but severe weather is on the way. Find out how long the strong storms could last. The suspect in the Michigan shootings appeared in court today. Find out what he's being charged with and how communities are remembering the victims. And conflicting coffee studies. One study says coffee could potentially help your liver, but another says it could be bad for your diet. We'll sort out the details in today's health headlines. Side dish surprise. See what gross discovery one woman found in a can of green beans. Falcon Weekly starts right now. And welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Brianna Rose. And I'm Eli McCutcheon. Thanks so much for joining us. Forecasters are predicting some severe weather for much of Alabama Tuesday night. And things could, could get bad in Montevallo. Falcon Weekly's Courtney Boyd joins us from outside the MassCom building with the latest on the forecast. Courtney? Parts of southern Alabama, including Birmingham, are in a severe weather threat until 4 a.m. This threat includes weather conditions such as tornadoes, damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour, and even quarter-sized hail. Overnight, Birmingham will experience temperatures of 56 degrees with an 85% chance of rain before midnight. Chances of showers and thunderstorms will decrease in coverage after that time. For Tuesday through Sunday, we'll be experiencing some average temperatures. Tuesday, the high will be the warmest of the week with 71 and the low will be around 54. Wednesday, the high will be cooling down around 54 and the low will be down to 36. Thursday, the high will be about the same with 54 and the low 32. Friday, the high will be back up a little bit to 55 and the low will be down more towards 32 degrees. Saturday, the high goes back up with the hope of sunshine at 62 degrees and the low will be 39. Sunday, the high will be warming up the end of the week with 66 and the low down to 46. Reporting for Falcon Weekly, I'm Courtney Boyd. Thanks, Courtney. Remember that if a tornado touches down in your area, you should go to a basement or the lowest level of your home. You want to take shelter in a centrally located room, preferably one without windows. Also, seek extra protection by getting under large, solid pieces of furniture. Make sure to avoid any cars and mobile homes. If you're stuck outside, lie flat on the ground in a low place like a ditch. Turning now to your news to go. The gunman who police say randomly fired on people in three separate locations in Kalamazoo, Michigan is facing six counts of murder. Andrew Spencer has the latest on the case and shows us how the victims are being remembered. Brian Dalton. 45-year-old Jason Dalton appeared before a judge Monday, two days after a shooting spree in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You understand the charges being made against you, the maximum sentences. That I just stated. Prosecutors are charging Dalton with six counts of murder, two counts of assault with intent to commit murder, and eight firearm related counts. Police say Dalton opened fire at three locations over the course of nearly seven hours Saturday night, picking up Uber fares in between shootings. A total of eight people were shot, six of them killed. I said, uh, You're not the shooter, are you? And uh, he said, No. And I said, Are you sure? And, and he uh, kind of uh, just said, no, I'm just tired. I've been driving for seven hours. His first stop was at an apartment complex where a woman was shot multiple times. She remains in critical condition. Several hours later, police say Dalton opened fire again at a car dealership where he shot and killed a father and son. Minutes later, five people were shot in the parking lot of a restaurant. The only survivor there, a 14-year-old girl who remains in critical condition. Dalton was arrested two hours later. Monday, a mass was held in honor of the victims. Condolences came from President Barack Obama as he addressed the shooting during a governor's conference. On Saturday, another one of our communities was terrorized by gun violence. You got families who uh, are shattered today. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. Apple CEO Tim Cook is fighting for your privacy. The company is currently involved in a case connected to the San Bernardino shooting. Saeed Farouk and his wife sh shot and killed 14 people last December. Now the FBI is demanding Apple help break into Farouk's iPhone. Tim Cook is refu refusing, saying the case is about more than a single phone. Allowing access to Farouk's phone could open up every iPhone user's private information. 
Cook sent, sent out an email to his staff today thanking them for their support in the case. The death toll in Fiji has been raised to 20 people after tropical cyclone Winston lashed out over the weekend. According to Fiji's Prime Minister, there is widespread damage and flooding over the Pacific, South Pacific Island as winds come in up to 186 miles an hour. Thousands of people have fled their homes and those that stayed inside are without power or water. A curfew remains in place and schools have been closed as people try to recover from the harsh conditions. The flooring under your feet could raise your risk of cancer. That's the warning from the Centers for Disease Control. The CDC's new report raised its estimate of the cancer risk from formaldehyde in some laminate flooring. Other health problems linked to exposure to the chemical include asthma and eye, throat, and nose irritation. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says to reduce your exposure to the formaldehyde, you should improve ventilation, use humidifiers, and use air conditioners to maintain a moderate temperature. Toyota is recalling nearly 3 million SUVs worldwide because of possible problems with the seatbelts. The automaker says a flaw could cause some rear seatbelts to fail. The affected vehicles are the Toyota RAV4, the, the Toyota RAV4 EV, and the Toyota Vanguard built between 2005 and 2014. Toyo Toyota dealers will fix the problem at no cost to the consumer. RAV4 and Vanguard owners can contact their Toyota dealer or visit Toyota's website for more information. Hoverboard makers may soon get hit with recalls if they don't get their act together. That's what the warning from the Consumer Product Safety Commission issued to manufacturers, importers, and retailers. Some models of the self-balancing scooters are prone to catch fire and can even explode. Hoverboards have been linked to at least 52 fires. They're not permitted on public streets, sidewalks in London. New York City has banned them altogether. The University of Montevallo has also placed a ban on hoverboards in all campus buildings. In election news, Donald Trump is tightening his grip on the GOP nomination after winning the South Carolina primary. Jeb Bush ended his run for the White House with an emotional goodbye after he failed to pick up enough support in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. Hillary Clinton also won over the weekend, beating Bernie Sanders in Nevada. Alabamians will head to the polls next week to cast their votes in the presidential primary on Super Tuesday. Remember, there's more news online 24-7. Just search for UM Falcon Weekly on Facebook and Twitter to see more stories and news updates throughout the week. Coming up, childhood obesity is a major issue in the U.S. Find out how eating this food while pregnant may be part of the problem. And Kesha gets major support in the fight against her producer. Find out which singing superstar just gave Kesha a quarter of a million dollars. Plus, how much is rapper 50 Cent worth? Find out why his Instagram posts have him headed to court. Good news for coffee drinkers, a new study says drinking coffee could reduce your risk of developing liver disease. Researchers say two cups of coffee could reduce your chance to develop alcohol-related cirrhosis by 44%. Cirrhosis deteriorates their liver by blocking the blood flow. Alcoholism is the second most common cause of the condition in the United States. However, experts say that coffee will never balance out the negative effects of excess alcohol. Another new study shows that a cup of high-end coffee can have nearly three times the amount of sugar than a can of soda. According to a new report by the British campaign group Action on Sugar, a drink from Starbucks can contain more than three times the maximum daily amount of sugar recommended by the American Heart Association. Starbucks has since responded saying the company has, commi has committed to reduce its sugar by in drinks by 25% by the end of 2020. A major breakthrough in fight against cancer Researchers at Seattle's Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center announced a potential new treatment last week. The treatment is based on what's called immunotherapy that helps a person's immune system fight off cancer cells in a way that's similar to the way your body fights a virus. In the treatment, doctors take white blood cells called T cells from cancer patients and genetically modify them. The cells are then put back in the patient to multiply. Researchers say the genetically modified cells could protect the patient from cancerous invasions. 
A new study suggests eating fish more than three times a week during pregnancy could be associated with an increased risk of childhood obesity. Researchers analyzed data from 26,184 pregnant women and their children spanning 11 countries. They followed up with children at two-year intervals from birth until age six. The study found that pregnant, pregnant women who are ate fish more than three times per week gave birth to children with higher BMI values compared with women who ate fish less. The study says the magnitude of the effect of fish intake was greater in girls than boys. A new study suggests that a third of Americans are not getting enough sleep. The CDC shows analyzed data from more than 400,000 people in all 50 states in Washington, D.C. Lack of sleep is associated with health issues like greater risk of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and mental illness. The CDC says this study is the first study to examine sleep hours on a state level. Southeastern states and those along the Appalachian Mountains reported the least amount of sleep, but the state with the single lowest reported sleep levels was Hawaii. Coming up next, Philadelphia police may have the solution to Kanye's money troubles. See how the officers plan to put him to work. And more people than ever are applying to go into space, and now thanks to a new spaceship, if you have enough cash, you could soon have the chance. Jordan Ashley Four now joins us for a look at the latest entertainment headlines. What do you have for us today, Jordan? Just days before the Oscars, a new study is shining a harsh light on lack of diversity in Hollywood. Researchers studied 414 films and series. It was released last Monday by the media, Diversity and Social Change Initiative at the University of Southern California's Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. The report found that out of more than 11,000 speaking roles studied, almost 70% were male, less than 35% were female, more than 70% were white, just over 10% were black, and only 2% were gay, lesbian, or bisexual characters. When the group looked behind the camera, it says it found that women and minorities were also underrepresented as directors, writers, and show creators in the industry. Senior Kesha has gained another major supporter in her legal fight against her producer, Dr. Luke. A Taylor Swift spokesperson says the singer donated $250,000 to Kesha to help with any financial needs. On Friday, Kesha lost a court fight with her producer, who she claims drugged and raped her. A New York judge refused to release Kesha from her contract. Stars like Lady Gaga, Demi Lovato, and Ariana Grande have spoken out in support of Kesha. Rapper 50 Cent will have to explain his Instagram pictures to a bankruptcy judge. He filed for bankruptcy last year, but later posted, picture, er, but later posted pictures of himself with piles of cash easily adding up to $50,000. A judge told his attorneys he must come to court and explain, and his legal team said he would, but when is unclear. The rapper says he's been driven into bankruptcy by lawsuits. He's facing $29 million worth of financial claims by his ex-girlfriend, SunTrust Bank, and the headphone company Sleek Audio. Thanks, Jordan. Now let's take a look at this week's trending stories. Falcon Weekly's Matt Harchuk and Jordan Ashley Four joins us for the buzz. Matt, what do you have for us today? Thanks, guys. Philadelphia police are trying to help Kanye West out of debt. It appears they're offering him a job. The police department posted this tweet on Thursday saying, We are hiring Kanye West. Starting salary of $47,929. You could be debt free by the year 3122. Kanye tweeted last week that he has $53 million in personal debt and that Mark Zuckerberg should invest $1 billion in him as the greatest artist of all time. Philly Police isn't just offering the job to West. They posted on their Facebook page that any job seeker can apply. West has not responded. So guys, what do you, do you think Kanye should take him up on their offer? Well, I think that's a great idea, but could you imagine getting pulled over by Kanye West? 
I honestly say beggars can't be choosers. So <laughs> I mean, hey. He's got to do something. 54 million is a lot of money. That is yeah. a lot of money. That it is. <laughs> When Troy Walker of Salt Lake City, Utah, opened her can of Western Family Green Beans, she found something she wasn't expecting. Walker first thought it was just a bad bean in the bunch, but after a closer examination, it turned out to be the head of a snake. Thankfully, the rest of the snake wasn't included. The Western Family Company has been notified and removed all of that particular canned vegetable from the shelves. The company is taking the proper steps to figure out where those beans came from and to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So guys, I gotta ask, what is the uh, strangest thing you have ever found in your food? Well, I've never found an animal or an insect in my food, but I have found a used glove. They uh, put it in the, my bag at Jack's one time. <laughs> so weird. Um, I think the grossest thing I found was like the leg of a cockroach like in my Subway sandwich. Not gonna Ooh. name where, but... <laughs> uh, uh, I'm out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> there are a whole lot of people hoping that they have the right stuff to go into space. NASA said Friday it received a record 18,300 applications for its astronaut candidate training program. That's nearly three times as much of the previous record that was around 8,000 in 1978. Out of all those applications, only between 8 and 14 people will be chosen to undergo two years of basic training and then will be assigned to one of four spacecrafts. Now, if you don't think you can be the next Buzz Lightyear, you might want to think about just taking a trip into space and coming right back. Richard Bronson's Virgin Galactic Venture unveiled its new passenger spaceship on Friday, nearly 16 months after a fatal accident destroyed its sister ship during the test flight over the Mojave Desert. The two-pilot, six-passenger spaceship, Unity, is designed to reach altitudes of 62 miles above the planet. Even though the trip only lasts a few minutes, over 600 people have invested in the $250,000 ticket to space, including such actors as Leonardo DiCaprio and Ashton Kutcher, as well as singer Justin Bieber. So guys, would you rather pay all that money to just take a little trip into space or actually try and make a little career out of it? Mm, I, I decline both. I like to eat, so, and I can't really eat normal food in space, so I pass. <laughs> so I think I would take my chances and just apply for the job and hope that I got it instead of spending, what, $250,000? Yeah. All that money. Could you imagine telling people, oh, I'm an astronaut, actually? <laughs> huh? I would try to, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This could be the greatest view of something that is actually to infinity and beyond. It's a massive black hole about 300 million light years from Earth. Scientists took their sharpest picture of it with the Hubble Space Telescope. This black hole is larger than a million suns combined, but it can't be seen because black holes pull light in with their gravity. However, astronomers can still figure out their size by looking at the stars around them. So guys, what? Man, that is a big hole. <laughs> no, a how, many, how many suns big was it? 300? Um, yeah, 300 wow. suns. I just think, I don't know, it's weird how, like, no, you can't see it. Like, the, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, reverse kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's weird. Science is weird. <laughs> <laughs> just the astronomy, though, is breathtaking. Right. When you think about it, that, it really is fascinating. Yeah. So I guess we could apply to be an astronaut to go learn more about that black hole. <laughs> right. Well, that's a look at the buzz. Now let's head down. Now let's head down to the Student Activity Center for Falcon Fever with Choreographio. The baseball team traveled to North Carolina Friday to take on the Pembroke Braves in a three-game series, which the Falcons won two games to one. Montevallo closed the series with a 7-4 overall record while holding a Peach Belt Conference record of 2-1. The Falcons fell to the Braves by one run in the first game on Friday, winning the final two games 11-2 and 11-4. The third game of this series featured plenty of excitement on the diamond, stemming from freshman Jamison Roney's strong start on the mound. He struck out four and allowed zero runs in just over six innings of work. 
Senior Jeremy Hyde also went deep twice, scoring two runs apiece as the Falcons cruised to victory. Moving on to softball, Montevallo faced Indianapolis on Friday in a doubleheader matchup. The Falcons were swept by the Greyhounds, losing the first, ga first game 12-2 in just five innings. The second game lasted a full seven innings with the Falcons coming up short 9-1. Montevallo softball is preparing for its Peach Belt Conference opener against Flagler, coming up on February 27th at Ore Park. Montevallo hoops were also in action Saturday, taking on the Flagler Saints. The men's team improved to an overall record of 17-8 after a 98-87 win. Senior Bryant Orange led the team with 29 points. The women's team also took the hardwood, losing a close one with a score of 58-62. The Falcons held a 27-7 lead early, but the Saints proved to be too much as they battled back for the win. Continuing on in a busy week of UM sports, the lacrosse team also had two games on Saturday. Montevallo won the first game against St. Mary's College 20-3, scoring 14 points in the first half alone. The second game against Oklahoma Baptist required overtime, but the Falcons walked away with an 18-17 victory. Jessica Culver scored the winning goal in overtime, taking the Falcons' record to 3-2. Next up for the Falcons is Shorter University to open up conference play on February 27th. That's the look at this week's sports. Reporting from the Student Activity Center, I'm Corey Graffio. Back to you. Thanks, Corey. Sunday was quite a day for a 106-year-old woman who got to visit the White House. Virginia McLaurin not only got to meet President Obama and the First Lady, she got to dance with them, too. In 2014, McLaurin began a social media campaign to meet the Obamas. She explained in videos online that she was so happy to see a black person in the nation's top job, and she mentioned, to the president, mentioned that to the president on Sunday. She showed her excitement by dancing. McLaurin was at the White House to celebrate Black History Month. So guys, what would you do if you met the, first pres or the president and the first lady? I would probably be just like that lady. <laughs> That's exciting. Like, yeah. It's precious. I would dance. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great honor to meet someone in a, such high power, you know, it's just... Yeah. Might as well take him for a dance partner, too. Definitely <laughs> cute video. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. For more UM news from MassCom student reporters, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. We'll see you again next week.